I have a new distilling thingy. What's it that I'm really looking forward to using? And this is a great feeling, I love it. So I'm gonna try and help you guys get this feeling as well by giving you a bunch of different recommendations for things you can pick up for yourself or buy for someone else that's into distilled spirits or distilling. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and we are officially into silly season. Black Friday sales going crazy, Thanksgiving, Christmas, holidays, all of it coming up. So of course, it's time to do a gift kind of video. Maybe you're watching this because you're into distilling or distilled spirits, and you know you're gonna get some average gifts. You wanna get yourself something nice. Uh, maybe you're in that situation so you can pass this video on to uh, someone else to give them a little hint. Or maybe you found your way here because you have a special someone in your life that you want to get something nice for. This video is going to help you along the way. And throughout it all, I'm going to show you off my new toy, which is one of those things. Uh, but to see that new toy that I'm excited about, you're going to have to wait till the end of the... Joking. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you right away. <laughs> Screw YouTube retention and all of that good stuff. Uh, this is an Infinity Barrel by Bad Motivator Legacy Barrels. So it's very similar to the standard Bad Motivator Barrels. If you haven't heard about those, uh, I don't think you've been watching my channel a whole lot. Uh, but the idea is it is a very, very reduced volume compared to a standard barrel, uh, but it's also reducing the surface area of oak to mimic a large barrel in a nutshell. This one's set up a little bit differently. It comes with a cool leather-bound notebook to keep track of what's going in there and what's coming out. It comes with a oak stand, uh, and instead of having a like just a, a, a cut bung hole in the top, you have a ferrule with a cork. So it's easier to put stuff in there and take it out all of the time. But what is an infinity barrel? The plan is I'm gonna keep going back to this barrel throughout the course of the video, show you everything I put in it and what my idea is for it. Uh, and in between those, I'm gonna show you the extra little gift ideas that I've got up my sleeve. First up, I wouldn't be a particularly good business owner if I didn't recommend our own stuff, right? And I think this is pretty cool. Uh, Glencans and coins, nothing new to you team, uh, but what we're doing at the moment is we have a bundle. You buy two Glencans, two coins as a bundle and you get a really solid discount on it. So that's available at chasethecraft.com. New Zealanders, Australians, I know you've been waiting for Glen Cairns for ages. They're in the country. They've made it through customs and they're on the way. Like they're being shipped right here, right now. I still don't have them in hand as of recording this video. Uh, scratch that, literally while I was recording this video, the delivery truck turned up and we now have Glen Cairns with our logo here in New Zealand. So uh, we'll put those on the website as soon as possible and you guys can get them as well. <laughs> what other Black Friday sales do we have at chasethecraft.com? Uh, a lot of the merch, shirts, coins by themselves, pins, a lot of that stuff's on discount at the moment. Go over to chasethecraft.com and you can check it out. All right, I've done my sales pitch onto a large ticket item that is hard to buy for yourself, unless you have an excuse. I make absolutely no money out of this, so you know I'm doing it just purely because I think the thing's damn awesome, and that is, the Anton Parr Easy Dents. This thing, I love it. Well, I did love it until I dropped it off a six foot shelf onto a concrete ground and broke it. I'm gonna have to buy myself another one. Uh, and right now, they have a 20% off Black Friday deal. So I'll put a link for that down below. What is it? It is essentially a hydrometer and an alchemeter all rolled into one and it is digital and so fast and you don't have to stress so much about Temperature calibration, because if it's within a narrow-ish window, it'll do it for you. If it's outside of that window, it'll say, you know, chill out, wait for a little bit, wait for the sample to cool down, uh, and then you can run it again. It will replace your hydrometer, your refractometer, your alchemeters. It works for all of it. The readings are really quick. It's not cheap, though. It is a little bit spendy. Uh, so like I said, it's hard to buy for yourself, unless you have an excuse. It is, however, a really cool high impact gift for any distiller. There has been this idea of an infinity bottle kicking around in, mostly I've seen it in kind of whiskey appreciation, whiskey drinker, whiskey snobs, whatever you want to call them, circles. Uh, and the idea is that you, you take a vessel, a bottle, whatever it happens to be, 
Uh, I used an old Costco gin bottle for a while. And you fill it up with whatever you want. Generally, people will mix different things, like they make their own blend. Uh, and it's not precious. The idea is to drink it. But whenever you drink it, obviously the, the level, the volume inside the bottle is going to drop. So you need to fill it up with something else. You just keep on doing it. You keep on over and over and over again, uh, drinking a little bit, filling it up, constantly creating a morphing, kind of a live blend of whiskey or gin or rum or a blend of all of the things if you want to. That's a very cool idea. On the production side, there's another idea concept called Solera. You can do this in different ways. You can have a giant vat. You can have multiple barrels that you kind of shift around and take from. Uh, but the basic idea is that whenever you bottle spirit, you don't bottle all of the stuff that's at the age to bottle. You bottle say a half of it. You reserve half and then you put new spirit into that and let it age again. This is kind of, to me, a interesting happy medium between both of those. You could use it either way. So I'm torn. There's kind of three ways that I'm excited to go about this. One is to just throw caution to the wind and just put a whole bunch of stuff in here, see what happens and then start kind of tweaking the, the mix, the blend, to turn it into something interesting. That could be fun, uh, throw caution to the wind, sure. Another way would be to very carefully craft a specific blend to put into it and see what that turns into over time. You know, like pull up all the little dregs that I've got sitting around, spend a few hours tasting them all, tincturing them out, trying them, come up with a, a specific blend that I think is more than a sum of all of the parts. That could be fun. The third is to go kind of more conceptual and pick a certain style of whiskey or a certain type of whiskey and do a little bit of either side. Kind of just throw a little bit of everything in there but very carefully put more of certain things in there to push it in a specific direction. I'm torn. <laughs> A lot of the products I've talked about so far have been quite spendy. So let's talk about a few things that are a whole lot cheaper and that are pretty damn easy to get hold of. We talked about the Easy Dents, awesome product, I love the thing. If you value your time or just accuracy, ease of use, it's wonderful. You don't need one. These things, refractometers, hydrometers and alchemeters will get pretty much exactly the same results for you. They're just well, they're not as cool to start with, and they're a little bit more fiddly, a little bit more time consuming to use with a few caveats. Let's talk about refractometers first. You can get these in two flavors. The first is to measure alcohol and water. Wonderful for reading proof coming off the still. Wonderful for taking quick readings of the proof that your spirit is at. It's kind of two problems with them. One is that they only go up to about 80% accurately. Over 80%, they just, I mean, most of them don't even make the scale above 80%. And the second is, as soon as you add anything else in, like most of these methods, they're no good for reading um, if you make a liqueur, for example. The second flavor of refractometer is to measure bricks or gravity. For us, how much sugar is in water. And they're wonderful for that. They work really, really quickly. They don't care so much about the temperature of the liquid that you're reading. The the big caveat is that you cannot use a refractometer to measure final gravity unless you're using a calculator and you have an accurate original gravity measurement. Enter hydrometers. Once again, these came in two flavors. One to measure water and alcohol and the other to measure sugar and water. What's the caveat with these? Well, they're a little bit harder to read because you got to I, I find them harder to read to get resolution on them uh, instead of looking at a blue and white line on a scale through these. You're kind of looking at the meniscus on the surface of the water and lining the bottom of that up with a scale on here. Uh, and the second is these are a whole lot more uh, dependent on the liquid that you're testing being very close to the temperature that these are calibrated for. And both of these are 20 degrees Celsius. The great news with both of these is that they're dirt freaking cheap. There's Black Friday sales on Amazon at the moment. Uh, you can pick these up for about, 
I think 16 to 20 dollars American. These are slightly cheaper. I'll put links down below and you can check them out. Awesome tools. If you have one type of refractometer, I'd suggest getting the other. You'll love it. If you have these, get some more because you will inevitably drop them and break them. <laughs> All right, I have decided what I'm gonna do with this Badmo Legacy Infinity barrel. And the thing that's pushed me over the edge is that, like I said, this is, I, I've got kind of a custom pre-prototype type jobby here with, actually with a, a X Sherry head, which is pretty cool. And it smells very, very strongly of Sherry, which is awesome. Uh, you can't get the Infinity bar barrels with the Sherry head, but you can get, the standard Badmo barrels uh, with sherry heads, which are pretty freaking cool. Uh, I'll, I'll link those down there as well. My absolute favorite type of sherried spirit is Isla. I love Isla smoke and sherry crammed together. So what I'm gonna do is dedicate this barrel specifically to creating a or a homage, <laughs> an impersonation of a sherry cask finished Isla whiskey. Uh, I'm not gonna be precious about what I put in here, but that's kinda, that, that is the goal that I'm, I'm sort of aiming for, and I'm gonna give myself wiggle room to put all sorts of other things in there. So, the first thing I'm gonna put in there is this. This is, I'm gonna say, two and a half liters of an all grain Isla style scotch that I made quite some time ago. Um, I'm gonna put all of this in there because this is tasting really good and this, the smell of that with the smell of the sherry is, that's, that's exciting to me. So let's dump all of this in there. This is a bad idea doing it like this, Jesse. Yeah, that's a really bad idea. I don't wanna waste this. Hold on, let me get a jug. And of course I need to write down uh, what I've put in there. Uh, but the other thing that's conceptually really cool about having a barrel like this or a bottle like this is that as long as you never actually fully empty it, there's always going to be, even if it's diluted down to insignificant amounts, a little bit of everything you've ever put in there will always be in there. Conceptually, that's kind of cool. I have more plans for this coming up, but first, a few more gift ideas. Scales! Honestly, these are kind of dime a dozen now, so I'm not gonna recommend any specific brands, uh, but what I am gonna do is recommend three different flavors again. First of all, a large scale that'll weigh a relatively large mass. This one goes up to 50 kilos, that's that in uh, Freedom Units. But specifically, it has the readout on a little cord coming off the side. These are awesome, awesome for weighing grain. You can throw your bucket on top, fill the bucket up and easily see the readout over here. Second, a standard kitchen scale. Having a second one that you can keep in the shed and you don't get in trouble for using yeah, is pretty freaking cool. These ones for measuring smaller amounts of grain, for measuring large amounts of botanicals, uh, medium amounts of sugar. These are pretty cool for that. And lastly, a set of precision scales, a small set of scales that'll accurately read to the gram uh, and go up to about 100 grams normally. These are awesome for measuring small amounts of botanicals, uh, for measuring precision amounts of yeast nutrient, for yeast, so on and so forth. Get all of this stuff at wherever you get your kitchen supplies. I'll list some Amazon links down below, because uh, if you're in that part of the world, great place to buy them. If you're in, say, New Zealand or Australia, yes, you can shop from Amazon in America. The prices are decent. What you wanna do is look for the free shipping options. You need to buy $50 American worth of stuff. If you buy the free shipping options, you get free shipping and suddenly it turns into a pretty good deal. There's decent Black Friday deals to be had on all of the scales, so check those links out down there. Next up, into the AM. Dope ass shirts. For once, I'm actually not wearing them because I'm wearing our own shirt. Uh, but they do awesome graphic shirts and uh, they actually have three collaboration t-shirts with us, with Stillit, with Chase the Craft. Three shirts that are specifically designed for distillers with a bunch of Easter eggs in them, the dope. And right now, if you use uh, our link down there, you'll get 10% off after you get 30 to 80% off for the Black Friday deal. Great time to buy distilling shirts from Into the AM. 
So I actually hadn't planned on doing this, <laughs> but after, after thinking about what I said about how there's always a little bit of something in this barrel once you put it in there, kind of got me thinking. Uh, and conceptually, I'd like to put a few things into this barrel that are special to me. The first one, this, this is the first thing that leapt to mind when I thought of this, is the Irish peated whiskey that I made a long time ago. Uh, this one went a little bit crazy. It has hints of apple and blue cheese along with kind of the Irish profile and the, uh, um, the peat. So putting this in here makes this special to me. Every time I drink this, I'm gonna be able to remember and think about that spirit. Does that make sense? I don't know, I, I, it's kind of cool for me. <laughs> so 200 mils of that. The other thing that jumped to mind was the Manuka smoked whiskey, uh, because I just tasted this in a recent video, and it's kinda, it needs to be used. The ABV is dropping on this, it needs to go into something. The thing with this is the Manuka smoke is super, super, super strong. It'll take over whatever you put it into really quickly. So I'm only gonna put 100 mils of this in here. Once again, uh, this, it makes me happy. It makes me happy to put that in there and to know that there'll always be just a little bit of the Manuka smoked single malt in here. I get that it can be really hard to buy gifts for someone that's into a specific hobby because they know what they like, they know what they already have, all of it's gibberish to you, you don't get it. So sometimes for the distilling hobbyist, the best thing you can buy them is just spirits. Buy them a bottle of what they're into and then it's so much more than just what they're into and a nice drink. It turns into inspiration that they can use in their hobby as well. It turns into a yardstick that they can aim for. It gives them a new idea of a certain flavor profile that they hadn't thought of trying to incorporate into a spirit. That can be tricky buying a single bottle. So I've got a suggestion and this is more of an idea because I don't know where you can get this specific product. Wherever you are, you're gonna be able to find something like it. And that is drinks by the dram. Instead of buying a bottle of spirit, you buy a set of spirits and Erin, uh, I know you never watch these videos, but guess what you're getting for Christmas? <laughs> I think this is a cool idea. It's kind of a little overpriced for what it is, but 12 different spirits in one box, that's cool. Let's suggest something a little bit more practical. Grain mill. If you're into distilling and you don't have one or the person you're thinking of doesn't have one, it's a great option because it will give you a little bit of a kick in the pants to just get stuck into all grain distilling. And for me, way back in my beer brewing days, honestly not having one of these was one of the excuses I gave myself to not make the jump from kit and kilo or partial mashes over to full all grain. As soon as I had one, I was away in sailing. These are an awesome option. I like the Claw Hammer Supply grain mill, link down there. So I have the Infinity Barrel base set up with the single malt Isla Scotch. I've got a little bit of kind of just feel goods in there as well. I'll probably keep adding to that, to be honest, the feel good side of things. Now I wanna put a couple of things in here that on paper to me, make a lot of sense in terms of adding flavor that I want into this barrel. First up uh, is a little bit of Bourbon. This is 100% corn, nothing else in it. Uh, it is the same as the bourbon barrel that I have sitting in a Badmo, Badmo barrel, uh, but this was a test. I, I did individual tests on yeasts at the same time. The reason I wanna put this in here is that more often than not, uh, an Isla Scotch will be aged in a X bourbon barrel. And then if you're going to get sherry flavor into it, that will be a finishing barrel that comes later. I didn't have ex bourbon barrel staves for this, so there wasn't a lot of flavor carryover from the bourbon side of things. Let's just put a little bit of bourbon in there to kind of mimic that. And honestly, uh, I have 400 mils of this sitting in a jar that's just kind of going begging, so let's put all of that in there. Next up, some grappa. 
Weird, I know. Like I said, I'm not gonna be precious about this. I just kind of want it to taste delicious. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is put 200 mils of this in there for now. And then kind of assess the situation a little bit later on to see if I wanna put some more in. Uh, why am I putting this in here? Well, when I tasted the grappa not long ago, uh, oh no, I'm spilling. Uh, I had a, a different version of this grappa that was getting a little bit long in the tooth, I'd aged it on too much oak, the ABV dropped, uh, and it was too astringent. I almost put it back into faints to redistill and realized having an astringency bomb to use for blending is great. And having that kind of grappa, fruity, herbal characteristic in a whiskey could be really fun. So I don't need the astringency, but I can just grab some of the grappa. <laughs> This is a wrapped pill, and it does pretty much the same thing as a hydrometer or a refractometer, except, eh, eh, get out of there. <laughs> you can drop the whole thing into your fermenter and it'll data log via Bluetooth over to a computer or whatever other, a tablet if you have it, and create graphs, real-time graphs for you, which is, I don't know, that's pretty freaking cool. Key from Kegland sent this to me a long time ago, and honestly, sorry Key, I kind of forgot about it. It's just sat in a box in the corner. But I discovered it a couple of days ago, and I'm kind of excited to try it out, actually. Uh, to be honest, once again, sorry Key, uh, there's other brands that make very, very similar things to this, like the Tilt, so depending on where you are, your budget, brand allegiance, or so on and so forth, you've got options. All right, let's give this a taste and see where we're at. Now, I should point out that whenever you're doing this kind of thing, blending things together, you need to let it sit a little while to really know what it's gonna taste like. This is in oak, so it's gonna keep evolving, and it's in sherry oak, so that is slowly going to get more and more heavy in terms of the sherry presence as well. Uh, but I just wanna have a taste now to see if it's generally balanced and see if it's a good starting point for this whole uh, Infinity Barrel experiment. Okay, so, on the nose, I'm getting a little tiny hint of that kind of blue cheesy funk from the Irish Peat. I'm so happy about that. I've tried blending it in the past into other products, and you lose that, it just disappears. So I'm really happy there's a little bit of that in there. Smoke. Not picking up any of the grappa characteristic. Could probably go a little bit heavier with that. That's a really nice base. I, I don't think I'm gonna mess with this anymore just yet. I'm getting heaps of peat on the back end. But we go through interesting different fruits to get there. Bourbon sweetness in the middle, and then the peat sort of strips the palate off at the ends. I'm hoping what's gonna happen is the sherry is gonna pop up and add to that bourbon sweetness and give the, the kind of sherried notes lingering with the peat in the aftertaste. That's what I want. Right now I have 2.7, three and a half liters in here, so it's a little over half full. I'm gonna leave it like that for a while. I like the idea of every time I make something that's peated, putting a little bit in there, even if it's just like a shot glass worth, to say that it's in there. If it's something that's really gonna lend to the overall characteristic of the barrel, I'll put more. Uh, the only only change I'm gonna do right now is put another 200 mils of the grappa in, uh, because I'm not sensing that at all in terms of flavor. I'm not sensing any, it's not giving any weird um, off characteristics, like it's not messing with the body of the spirit or anything like that. Uh, so let's just put another 200 mils of that in now. Take a little sip, because why not, out of my measuring cup. And I'm gonna call that good. <laughs> so just to remind you on this, this is the Infinity Barrel from Bad Motivator Legacy Barrels. It comes with the leather notebook. The barrel itself, which now has a port on top and the stand, it is pricey, but it is also a limited run. He's making 44 of these, I believe. Mine doesn't have it, because it's sitting outside that 44, uh, but the main 44 barrels will have, you know, one of 44 on the barrel. You don't need this barrel 
to do an infinity barrel or bottle, obviously. It's just a cool thing to have. It's a cool centerpiece in your bar, out in your shed, you know, in the kitchen, <laughs> if you want to keep it. Uh, and if you're into kind of collectory item stuff, it's kind of cool to get a, a limited edition one as well. But of course, you could find an old large bottle, soak it in nappy sand, strip all the labels off, get the kids to uh, design a label for mum or dad, and uh, do it that way if you want to. There's a real cheap idea for you for uh, a distiller for Christmas. <laughs> all right, team, this has been a blast. I need to get going. I will catch you guys next time. See ya.